What's going on YouTube? Today we're taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now I've had this phone for a while, but one of the things I haven't really done in a video is shown how to clean up a phone, especially one of these that's from the uh, carrier. So this model right here is an AT&T specific Galaxy S4. Most of the things that I'm going to show you though will work on a Sprint version or a T-Mobile version, etc, etc. So, this is a very popular phone. Uh, a lot of people got these over, you know, the Christmas holiday as gifts. And by now you've more than likely discovered there's a lot of stuff pre-installed on this. Uh, I've gone ahead and made some folders on the home screen here. So first we have the AT&T apps. I'm going to go ahead and hit this folder here. And you see we've got eight, nine apps on here. Now I can tell you, I've had this phone since about September. I've had AT&T phones in the past, and I honestly do not use any of these apps for AT&T. If you don't use them, you're stuck with these apps on your phone, and more than likely they're running in the background, consuming memory and just bogging your device down. So why bother leaving them there when we can get rid of them? Now, unfortunately, Samsung and AT&T, in an evil collaboration, put these in the portion of memory where you are restricted access and you can't uninstall them. One of the things you could do is you could root the device, unlock the bootloader, you flash your custom ROM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all great options. If you love tinkering with gadgets, if you're then yeah, I definitely recommend that route. If you're someone who doesn't really want to mess with that stuff, it can be a little daunting, and if you don't do it right, you can destroy your phone and it will void your warranty as well too. So if those are things that you don't want to deal with, you just want to hide these apps, you don't want them running in the background, what you can do is you can actually disable a lot of these apps. And to do that, it's very simple. So I have these in my folder here. I hit the back button. If you haven't made a folder for them, you just have them in your app drawer. For example, I'll do a press and hold on my AT&T, and you see up here we have disable app as an option, but I'm not going to do that, I'm actually going to go to app info. And when I go there, we have turn off, which will disable it. I go ahead and clear any data, any cache, clear that out, yes, and then so now we have as little amount of memory on the phone used up as possible by this app. Yeah, it's still sucking up five and a half megs, but again, this is this is the best option if you don't if you don't want to mess with rooting or unlocking your phone. So once we've done that, go ahead and hit turn off. And just disclaimer, I have gone through the process of disabling all of these apps that I'm going to show you to disable. It doesn't break the phone, so you can do this and you shouldn't have any problems. So go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. So now it's still on our phone. We see the actually the usage has gone down, but it is no longer running, it's no longer on. And let me see, do this, hit OK, and then go ahead and hit the home button. And if I open that folder, it's not there anymore. Hit back, go to the app drawer, it's not there anymore either. Go ahead and do this with the rest of the AT&T apps. We also have these pre-installed ones, again ridiculous, you're stuck with them on, on your home screen and whatnot, again taking up space. And then... All of the Samsung apps, the one that literally is called Samsung apps, the thing that is kind of ridiculous about this is if you buy stuff through here, you're kind of limiting yourself to Samsung devices from here on out. So I personally would say disable all these. And again, same thing with those. Press and hold, go to app info, clear data, and turn off. So just hit OK, and then hit OK again. Once the updates are all uninstalled, then you'll see, again, it's the factory version, and that's why it's taking up so much less memory. So I'll uncheck that, hit OK, hit the home button. And again, as I said, it's no longer here. Hit home, go here. Samsung Apps is no longer there as well. And so just go ahead and keep doing that with whatever apps are on here that you can uninstall and that'll free up some space on your phone. It'll keep things from running that you don't want running and it will hide them from your app drawer so that you can only have the apps that you care about. One of the other things you can do to speed your device up aside from uninstalling all those pre-installed apps that I talked about is you can turn animations off for some of the, for some of the aspects of the operating system. If I go to settings, it kind of animates out. To turn all those animations off and just give you a little bit better speed, go to more, and you see I have developer options here, but 
this isn't on by default. To get that turned on, you go to About Device, scroll down to Build Number. Kind of hard to see here, but it starts with JSS. What you do is you tap that seven times. And on mine it says developer mode is already turned on, but on yours it'll give you a countdown. Once you tap it enough times, you'll get a message that says developer options are now turned on. So go back, and you'll see it'll have that option there. Once you have developer options, they should be on. Hit OK. And we scroll down to the drawing area. And all these animations, we're going to turn these off. So we're off. As you can see, just in those options right there, it's a lot quicker. So if I go to one, you see it kind of fades in, but if I turn it off, it just pops in immediately. So all those animations are now pretty much gone when I hit the home button. You see it just appears. If I go back to settings, again it just appears, it's a lot quicker. And so that'll speed up a lot of portions of the operating system. So the last thing I want to show you, hit the home button again. The last thing I want to talk about is actually getting rid of the launcher. I've done several videos for launchers in the past. Basically what a launcher is going to replace is it's going to replace your home screens and your app drawer. And there's lots of launchers out there. Like I said, I've done videos for a few. Uh, for this video, I'm going to go ahead and do Nova Launcher. Go ahead and go to the Play Store. Just search for Nova Launcher. So now that Nova Launcher is installed, it is a free app. If you want to pay for the Prime version, you get more options. But again, that's not necessary to actually install the launcher. But you do miss out on some pretty nice features. So once that's installed, if you hit the Home button, you see now we get this action. And just select Nova Launcher and then hit Always. And that's going to, from now on, use Nova Launcher whenever you hit the Home button. So I'll hit Always. This is telling you that if you want to stop using Nova Launcher, but you don't want to uninstall it, you can just find it in the App Settings and then turn it off. So, okay. So there we go. We are now using Nova Launcher. You see the icons are different on the bottom. And it is much quicker. And there you have it. So... I'll put links to the Nova Launcher video and the other launcher videos that I've done in the description if you want to try out other launchers. Hopefully this will help you kind of get through some of the aggravation of owning a carrier branded phone. Uh, in this case, like I said, this was an AT&T version. This will work with Sprint and T-Mobile and Verizon versions as well. So good luck getting your shiny new Galaxy S4 optimized and running a little bit better. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Or you can comment on this video down below, and I will see that in my Google Plus feed. So until next time, take care.